One of the most overused and probably abused terms recently is pivot. Everyone's saying that it's important, it's critical, you've got to be able to pivot to adapt to the changes, but how do you do it? That's what I want to get into in this video is get into what does it mean to pivot and how exactly do you do it? Uh, the interesting thing is I've been doing strategic planning both within an organization and for my clients now for thir over 30 years. And most of the situations I've worked in are those where the rules have changed, where something, technology, competition, regulations, whatever has shifted and people have had to reinvent what they're doing or pivot long before this word came into effect. So the, the art of innovative strategy is what this is really about. Now, one thing that happened uh, with the pandemic, with the lockdown, was a lot of people got into a lot of fear because the traditional ways of doing things just weren't there anymore. Retail shut down. Uh, people couldn't go to work. We had to find new ways and sometimes the people didn't see any ways of doing it so they just said what can we do can we do anything to generate revenue that's not pivoting that's okay maybe there's another opportunity but to me pivoting is taking your strengths and leveraging them in a new way to serve your market or maybe other markets it's very much strategic and it's strengths based and it takes some time to start to look at what are we doing at essence, not the literal, what, you know, what, what are the widgets we're producing or the exact service we're producing? What's the difference that we're doing for our clients? And what may be other ways of doing this? Now, a lot of organizations have done, uh, you know, for years, process improvement, doing all sorts of innovative changes but that's really just tweaking what you're already doing. Really what innovative strategy reinvention is about is about saying, well, do we even need to be doing what we were doing? And what could we do in these new circumstances that could add the same value or different value with the strengths that we've got? Now, in order to understand it, let's take a look at uh, uh, what, what any process is. Any, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether product or service. You will have um, basically a, uh, what's gonna happen is any product or service is going to be a uh, black box that is uh, going to, uh, have there's going to be an input and what's going to happen is uh, the, there's an output and the black box produces that now where we tend to live in the organization is in the black box so there's some process there that produces what you need for your customer whether it's an internal customer or an external customer okay now if we were to look at this from the point of view of the customer, I think it would look a little different. For your customer, here's how they see it. You have an input, which is the customer saying, this is what I want. You have an output, which is them getting what they want. And in between, you've got this annoying, often irritating, black box that gets in the way that stops them from getting what they want because there's all sorts of oops loops things that uh, have to go through that have no value to the customer they may to you but they have no perceived value to the customer if we're brutally honest is this not how the customer sees it whatever you do whatever service whatever value you provide whether you're talking about yourself as an employee and the inputs and the outputs you're producing or 
as an entrepreneur, a business owner, what you're producing for your customer, or even in the public sector. You, whether it's an internal customer or external for the public, you're producing, they're asking for something, you're producing the output, the black box is you producing it. But from your customer's point of view, their focus is on, I will ask for this, I get this, that's it. And the black box to them is really in the way. Now, here if we are brutally honest again, from our point of view, day to day, is this not the way that we see the world? Yes, there's that input, there's that output, but we've got this in process that we've got to follow through and we've got to tech, check all the boxes, make sure all the things done, do all these sort of things. And we are bound in that black box. That's where we live. And we can even get irritated by the customer because we're focusing on getting them what they want, but we have to do it our way. Now, if you're doing process improvements, if you're doing continuous improvement and such, you're working in the black box, you're tweaking that black box. You're not even asking, do we even need to be doing this? Is this adding value? Okay, if we are brutally, brutally honest, both of these are perceptions, but if you are going to be customer focused, neither is right or wrong, but if you're customer focused, which is the correct perception? It's the one on the left, is it not? The, the customer's point of view. And what happens more often than not is we spend time because we're we're invested in it in justifying the black box why it needs to be that way because it justifies our way of being it justifies what we are doing so when you are uh, working with this most people tend the natural tendency it's amazing i do programs all the time um, for uh, for clients and what happens all the time is I'll, I'll give them exercises where there's this process we've covered reinvention and so on but they automatically dive to how they can tweak how they can adjust how they can fix things and they come up with all these million ways instead of asking do we even need that process what has happened with the pandemic is quite often that process has been pulled right out rugs being pulled out so we have to find a different way from input to output so in a way it's been kick-started for us that uh, instead of challenging the the process how to tweak it we've got to move it out of the way I found that taking the black box out and saying if I was to start from scratch today to go from input to output what would be the best way of doing it forget what we've done it I find there's very little extra effort required to do that than to go in and produce uh, you know, improvements throughout the process. The difference is if you're doing process improvement, you get five, maybe five, 10% improvement. If you're doing reinvention where you take the black box out and say, what's the best way to get from input to output, you can get tens or hundreds of percent improvement in productivity. And I've been doing that for decades with my clients. Uh, but you've got to be willing to push that black box out. In fact, I found only three reasons for going inside the black box. One is to f calculate how much the process is actually costing you. So to, to figure out how much uh, it, it's actually right now, you don't know the hidden cost of that. I was working with a client that had uh, operations on two sides of the harbor in the city where I live. And there's a bridge in between with a toll this is a very, uh, it, it's, it's a government organization. It had all sorts of bureaucracies built in. And we calculated the person hours it cost for a person to get 
authorization to get a token to cross the bridge, which cost 75 cents at the time. And it costs in the order of $34.28 in person hours, lost time, lost productivity, all of the things you add up uh, for them to get a 75 cent token. And I know exactly why that happened because at some point, somewhere in the past, someone abused a token and used it for personal gain and maybe it got out on the media and such. And so they clamped down with these regulations to prevent abuse and wound up costing the taxpayer hundreds of percent more than, it, I mean, they could have abused, they could have 50 people abuse a token for every one used and still be ahead. But that's what happens with the processes. It gets built in. And uh, so to calculate how much it's costing. Second, is to make sure you're not throwing out any steps that actually add value. Because there may be something there that you've forgotten that is critical, that is a perceived value for the customer. And then the third reason is simply to um, ca calculate how much you've improved. So you take the, the cost from number one, compare it with the improvements that you have it, uh, at the end and you can show how much of a benefit you've uh, you've created now with the pandemic with everything happening what's happened is our black box has been pulled right out so what we have to do is go back and say what's the real input what's the real output that the customer wants and how do we find the best way to get there given con current conditions, given current constraints. And that's where you can apply a whole range of innovative uh, strategies. I'll be covering some in the, in the coming weeks uh, around that, about how do you actually innovate to, to bridge that gap. But the first thing you've got to get back to is, I, I believe, and I've found works best, put the black box aside and figure out what is it that they're really wanting how can I get across that gap today with the constraints we have and then just check, double check that you're not throwing out anything that adds value from the old process. That's where the real pivot comes in. That's where you can really transform what you're doing to get sustainable bottom line results that move you forward.